this is a video. It's going to be funny, but it's also going to be serious. Um, you might want to watch to the very end. Um, basically, um, what prompted this video is USA Today Online had an article about the Mormons. And you're probably going, oh, we're sick of hearing about the Mormons and Mitt Romney and the whole nine yards. Um, basically, the article stated that the Mormons had magic underwear. And we wanted to let you guys know of 14 things that are just kind of crazy, off the wall things about the Mormons and what they believe. And right now I know somebody's already typing saying, oh, you're intolerant, blah, 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 blah. Before you start typing, watch to the very end. I will give you the reason uh, what gives me the authority to say the things that I'm saying and also who gives me the authority to say the things that I'm saying. Um, as I mentioned, USA Today said that Mormons had magic underwear. I did not know that. That was a new one on me. Got to give them that one. Um, this video is going to range from the Mormons baptizing the dead. Yes, I said the dead. Um, Jesus is going to return in Missouri, not Israel, Missouri. Yes, I said Missouri. And that the Mormons don't believe in hell, which a lot of people are probably, you know, saying, yay, but you just need to listen to some of the things. Um, we have several books that the Mormons have come by and given us. We had the Mormons come by six times to our house trying to convince us to become a Mormon. They left us little pamphlets. They actually gave us the Book of Mormon to read over. And if you ever had them come to your house, majority of them, like I have done in the past, no thank you, poof, slam the door in their face. Well, this time we actually let them in and we wanted to hear what they had to say. So. We basically read all these pamphlets and we've come down to 14 things that are just so crazy that we think you need to know. So here goes. Number one, you may already know this. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not. Number one, Mormons don't drink alcohol, coffee, or tea. Now me being a Southerner, if Mitt Romney wins, does that mean he's going to ban tea? Oh, no, he better not, because Southerners can't live without sweet tea, honey. And if he thinks he's going to ban caffeine from me, oh, all hell going to brace loose. Mm, just letting you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure the Starbucks people will probably trample him to death. Mm, go figure. Um, number two, if Mitt Romney is president, does that mean all women have to wear dresses? And you say, where do you get that from? Why would they, why would they want us to wear dresses? Their little booklet, one of the booklets that they gave us, is called The Restoration. I'm going to let you look at that. It's a, it's a Mormon book. And in it, on page 22, I'm actually giving you pages so you can look it up, or if they come by, you can ask for a book. It states, the dress code for the Church of the Latter-day Saints says men and boys generally wear suits or nice pants with a shirt and a tie. You see them all the time on bicycles, wearing those. Women and girls wear dresses and skirts. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. And I don't feel like shaving my legs every single day. Sometimes I just wanna let them grow. Maybe one day I'll just braid them into a dreadlock and see what happens. I have little dreadlocks on my legs. Just saying. So three. So they informed us, the little, the little guys, I call them little guys because they were younger than me. Um, the guys indicated when they came to the house, they stated that the Mormons baptized the dead. Um, so like you dig people up, dead people, and baptize them? He said, no, 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 no. We baptize them by proxy. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, and I thought, okay, well, what do you mean? And he stated, well, 
our great-grandfather or great-great-great-grandfather, whoever the case may be, we're not too sure if they believed in Jesus or not. So what we do is I get in the baptismal pool and I take on his name and I get baptized. And then in the spirit world, someone goes tell my great-grandfather or my great-great-grandfather or whoever the case may be, hey, you just got baptized today. Do you accept Jesus? And either he will say yes and go to heaven, or he'll say no and stay where he's at. And I thought to myself, so if he says no, then you just baptized yourself for the fun of it? But this is in their book, Plan of Salvation. This is, this is their book. People, I'm telling you, this is all in their book. A comedian can have a field day, which I think um, the guys from South Park have already had a little field day with a Broadway show. But this is what it states about baptism. It states, Our Heavenly Father knew that many of His children would never have an opportunity to learn about Jesus Christ during their lives and that others would choose not to follow Him. Because he loves his children, God provided a way for those in the spirit world to learn about his plan, have faith in Jesus Christ, and repent. Those who accept and follow Jesus Christ will have peace and rest. So in the Mormons' thoughts that they're given everybody in the past that didn't even hear about Jesus, and those who didn't want to hear about Jesus, the opportunity to repent and so that just kind of makes me wonder does the um, the two towers in San Diego that nobody can actually get into and barely the members is that what they're doing they just have a big pool and everybody's just dunking each other you know today you're gonna be Joseph Smith which is mm, yeah alrighty here we go the next one um, the guys told us, the Mormons, just talking to them, that they could only see, excuse me, talk to their parents two times a year when they're in the mission field. They go two years consecutive, two years, back to back, out in the mission field, riding their bicycles, walking, trying to tell people about Jesus, and they're not allowed to talk to their parents but two times a year. Now, if you're like me, every other cult you ever heard about, what is the one thing that they do? They limit the time they can talk or have access to their family. Hmm, makes you kind of think, doesn't it? Alrighty, the next one. Now, this was just really wild to me. Well, there's a lot of wild ones here, but I'm just letting you know. They indicated, the Mormons, that Jesus and Satan went before God and asked to come down to earth. They said, Jesus said, I'll go down to earth and I will do your will and you get all the glory. Satan said, I'll go down to earth. I'll get them to follow you, but I want all the glory. And so in their salvation, here again, like I said, I'm not making this up. This is all in their book. It states, Throughout your pre-earth life, you were taught the principles and commandments that would lead to happiness. You grew in intelligence and learned to love the truth. You were taught about the plan of salvation. During the pre-earth -li pre life, Jesus Christ was chosen as the Savior you learn that through him, you would be able to overcome the effects of your wrong choices. So basically, Jesus was chosen. Ooh, 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 ooh! I want to go to earth. Let it be me. Let it be me. So basically, by this, they're saying that Satan pretty much wanted to come to earth. And it wasn't that Satan was kicked out of heaven. He was like, ooh, 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 I want to go. So, hmm, 
The next thing is, and this is the most oddball, out there, wild, crazy thing I have ever heard. Alrighty. The Mormons believe that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to Missouri. Not Israel, Missouri. Yay for Missouri! But my thing is, Missouri, I love you. No, I have no problems, but why Missouri? Why Missouri? I know the people in Israel, they don't believe in Jesus and they're waiting for their Messiah. But the thing is, they're thinking the Messiah is going to show up in Israel. And the Mormons are saying, no, he's going to show up in Missouri. If I was an Israeli, I'd be pissed. But this is what we found out. Alrighty, they gave us a little article. If you're wondering why we're saying that it's Missouri, we didn't choose Missouri, we've got all the documentation for you. Um, gave us a little card, and on the back side of the card, it's the Articles of Faith. And at the bottom, it says Joseph Smith's name. So I'm going to put this up here for you. It's a little article. It is 13, hmm, 13 articles. And it states on here, uh, article number 10. We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the ten tribes. That Zion, which is in Israel, but that Zion, the new Jerusalem, will be built upon the American continent. That Christ will reign personally upon the earth and that the earth will be renewed and receive its glory, excuse me, its paradise glory. So basically they believe that Jesus is coming to the American continent. It's on the little card. And they have in here where in Missouri that he's coming back. Um, it basically states in, we found this in a thrift store and you wonder why. This big honking book is the Book of Mormon. The Doctrine and Covenants, and the and the excuse me, the Pearl of Great Price, all three in one. Got it for a book. Basically, this is what they state: We're in Missouri. Jesus is coming back. Gee, you know Missouri, I love you, but I just don't understand why he's coming back to Missouri. But you know what, Missouri, you should be happy. Have a party. Jesus is coming back there. This is what the Mormon state. In their book, Doctrine and Covenants, let's see here, this section 57, and I'm going to start with number one. It states, Hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, who have assembled yourselves together according to my commandments in this land, which is the land of Missouri, no lie, people. I'm going to show it to you because, you know, it's just it's just kind of crazy. And I this is a big honking book, so you're going to have to bear with me. It's, it's right down here. It says, it says Missouri. See? Missouri. No lie. It's in here. Um, and apparently it's on a website called LDS, LatterdaySaints.org. Supposedly this is on here. It says, uh, in this land, which is the which is the land of Missouri, which is the land which I have appointed and consecrated for the gathering of the saints. Wherefore, this is the land of the promise and the place for the city of Zion. This is where the Israelis should be mad. That's what all i got to say. Um, and thus saith the Lord, your God, if you will receive wisdom, here is wisdom. Behold, the place which is now called Independence, Missouri is the center place and a spot for the temple is lying westward upon a lot which is not far from the courthouse. No lie, people. Supposedly the Lord got really detailed, which he usually does, and he told them to, to build a temple next to the courthouse in Missouri. So, well, it's down here. I'm going to let you look at it. I don't know if you can see it, but if you, you need a copy, just send us a note we'll send it to you 
Um, Wherefore, it is wisdom that the land should be purchased by the saints and also every track lying westward, even unto the line running directly between Jew and Gentile. So basically, the Mormons bought up a chunk of land because they thought that Joseph Smith was told by God that the Temple of Zion is going to be built next to a courthouse in Independence, Missouri. I, I don't, hey, I didn't make this up now. This is, it's right here. It's all for you to read. Yep, Jesus is coming back to Missouri. Um, then, they wanted to let us know that Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, for some who know, for some who don't know, Adam and Eve, basically, Adam purposely sinned on purpose. He ate that apple, which I'm hearing is really a grape. He ate the fruit that God told him not to eat because he wanted to know joy. Well, in their book, let's go back to the plan of salvation here, people. In their book, it states... If Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen, but he would have remained in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve would have had no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But behold, all things have been done in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things. Adam fell that men might be and men are that they might have joy. No lie, people. The Mormon said Adam purposely sinned to know joy. He he apparently when G, you know when God was walking in the garden with him, apparently that wasn't enough joy for him. He wanted to sin, go out on his own, venture out, see what else was out there. No lie, people. This is what the Mormons believe, that Adam purposely sinned so he would know joy. Right there, people. Right there. Not making it up. It's all in their books. All right, another one. It states that they basically behold angels and ministering spirits. In the actual Book of Mormon, here we go, Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon, it states on page 530 under Moroni, it states on verse 14 that they were given, the Mormons were given the, the gift, and it states, and again to another, the beholding of angels and ministering spirits. Okay, um, I have a question here because it says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, it states that now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of evil. So they're fond of beholding angels and ministering spirits. I would be kind of a little leery of, of that because, you know, God's Word, Holy Bible, says that in la latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Just saying, people. Just saying. Alrighty, the next one, they informed us, the Mormons, that if I had not had someone from the Mormons lay their hands on me, then I don't have the Holy Spirit. Per their little card, here's that little card again, number, let's see here, number four, it states, let me read it to you. We believe that the first principles of ordinances of the gospel are first. 
faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, second, repentance, third, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, fourth, laying on hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, but once I had grace through faith by Jesus Christ, I got the Holy Spirit. I did not need to be manhandled by anybody to get the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Hmm. Manhandle. Put their hands on me. Uh, think again. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Now this one is really good. Um, the Mormons, when they were here, we tried to show them that they pretty much were in a cult. Of course, they don't believe they're in a cult. Every one of them that come to you, they were born and bred and brought up in it. It's not somebody that was a Baptist and decided to become a Mormon. If you talk to them, you just get to know them. Don't be angry with them. Just get to know them. Just, how you doing? Where are you from? Nine times out of ten? Well, no, I take that back. 100% of the time, they're not even from your state. They're always from another state. Nobody within your state, not a Mormon will come to your door. They're always from another state. Um, basically, we were trying to show through the Bible that the Mormons kept stating that the Book of Mormon was an addition to the Bible, that it gave clarity and it was an addition to the Bible. And so we were trying, they were trying to show us that it was an addition and we were trying to show them that it wasn't adding anything. And in fact, it was kind of contradicting, not kinda, it is, it contradicts the Bible. But this um, one guy told us, he stated, we're reading too much from the Bible. Let, we need to read from the Book of Mormon. How, how can you read too much from the Bible? I mean, you just got through saying that the Book of Mormon is an addition to the Bible, so why don't you want to read from the Bible? This is what we found out in the Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon, the actual book, in their introduction. And it states, Concerning this record, the prophet Joseph Smith said, I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth. Most correct book of any, any on earth. And the keystone of our religion. And a man would get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than any other book. So that just, in their own words, they're saying that's the reason why he didn't want us to read in the Bible. Because they don't believe the Bible. They just use Jesus' name. Which the guy told us he had, you know, they had the little name badges and it says Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. And he said that they've been followed because Mitt Romney's, you know, running for president. That they've been followed by reporters and people telling them that they don't believe in Jesus, and the guy had the nerve, God love him, he was so, so innocent, to say, well, we got Jesus' name on our badge and on our building, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, but you don't believe in him, honey. You right here, you're, you're saying you don't even believe in the, the Bible. You only read the Book of Mormon, which we found out the kids didn't know anything about the Bible. You ask them a question, and they they pretty much, they knew certain verses. They know just enough to get by. But he would go through the Book of, I mean, the Bible, and the kids said, Oh, I haven't read this book yet. Oh, I haven't read this yet. And then he eventually admitted that he had not read the Bible at all which is pretty sad if you're going around with a Bible in your hand. But I wanted to let him know. He stated that he had Jesus' name on his name tag and Jesus' name on their, on their church building. An atheist can carry the Bible and have a name tag with Jesus' name on there and walk up and down the street. Doesn't mean that they believe in Jesus. Alrighty. So the next thing. Let's see here telling you this is just it's all documentation that's all we're giving you um, baptism you if you are baptized did you know you're not baptized into Christ Jesus 
that you're actually baptized in the Mormon church. Hmm. You say, how do you say that? Alrighty, let's go with, here's one of their books again. Their little pamphlets. Yeah, here we go. Page 18, baptism. Let me read it to you. An essential step in receiving forgiveness of sins through baptism and confirmation by priesthood authority, we become members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. Uh, did, did that just say we become members? It says through baptism and confirmation by priesthood authority, you become members of Jesus. I think it does. I think you need to look here, right down here. So when you're baptized, you're not baptized into Jesus. You're baptized in the Mormon church. Right down here. Right down here. Alrighty, people. It just, it gets, it, it gets crazier. It's going to get worse before I end this. Trust me. It, you're thinking this video is really bad. I'm telling you, this is just, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, some of these things. And now it's really going to get crazy. Alright, here it goes. So, if Mitt Romney becomes president, will it really be Mitt Romney running the country? Or will it be the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Um, the reason why I ask this question is because, let's see here, in their little booklet again, page 19. It states, uh, God's chosen prophet can receive revelation for the whole world. Let me back this up and read the very beginning of this. It says, Revelation, communication between God and his children, usually through the Holy Spirit, excuse me, Holy Ghost, they wrote. Individuals can receive revelation to guide their own lives, but only God's chosen prophet can receive revelation for the whole world. Revelation comes in many forms, but most often it comes in thoughts, feelings, and impressions. Okay, but you say, what's I got to do with the president of the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints? Okay, this says God's chosen prophet, but if you go to page 12 of the same book, let's go over here to page 12, it states, the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the chosen prophet of God today. The president of the church is the chosen prophet of God today. He, his counselors, and the twelve apostles hold the priesthood authority held by all the prophets and apostles of previous times. These men are prophets, seers, and revelators. Okay, if the president of the church is a prophet, a seer, and a revelator, and it states over here that God's chosen prophet, well, if the president of the church is God's chosen prophet, he can receive revelation for the whole world. So if he can receive revelation for the whole world, does that mean he's going to tell Mitt Romney what he foresees to do with the country? Just saying, it's down here. Black and white people. Says that he is the seer. He's the revelation. He can receive revelation for the whole world. This is the president of the Church of Latter-day Saints. So, um, apparently Mitt Romney is going to be going to fortune tellers to find out what he needs to do with the country because that's pretty much what this book is saying. Alrighty, let's go. Oh, here's a doozy. Here we go. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Alrighty, so here's another doozy. Per the Mormons, there is no hell. A lot of people are going, yay, I knew there was no hell. Yay. Alrighty, but did you know that you can kill somebody and still go to heaven and not repent? You can say, you can kill as many people as you want. Don't even repent about it. Don't even feel sorry about it. And guess what? You're going to heaven. Per the Mormons. Did you know that? 
It's in their book. Alrighty, here we go. Per the Mormons, there's three stages of heaven. And I'm going to read, read you this. Because um, yeah, it's just crazy. Here we go. It says, After you are judged, you will live in a state of glory because everyone's works and desires vary. Heaven includes different kingdoms or degrees of glory. Here's the first one. Celestial kingdom. Our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ reside in the celestial kingdom. If you live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ and are cleansed from sin by the atonement, you will receive a place receive a place in this, the highest kingdom. You will live in God's presence and know complete joy. Well, wait a minute. They just got through saying, you can, the, up here it says you can be in the presence of God and know complete joy. But they just got through saying that Adam sinned on purpose so he could know joy. But God walked in the Garden of Eden with Adam. God, if you're in God's presence, then you know complete joy. But Adam sinned because he wanted to know joy. Hmm. All right, second level of heaven. I'm going to say extraterrestrial. It just says terrestrial kingdom. No lie, people. There it is. Read it up close and personal. Terrestrial kingdom. It states, People who refuse to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, but who live honorable lives, will receive a place in the terrestrial kingdom. So if you've never killed anybody, but you do good, you feed the poor, you know, you, you, you take in stray cats, you're going to heaven, but you're only going to the second level. Here's where it gets really good. The third level, people. Third level. It states, it's the telestial kingdom. It states, those who continue in their sins and do not repent will receive a place in the telestial kingdom. No lie. Last one. Right there, people. Right there. So basically, if you murder, you can go to heaven. You don't have to repent. You don't have to confess. All the people that are in prisons, they say, you know, they murder 50 people. And you're, you're still, you know, you're not repenting of it. You're not sorry. You're glad you killed all those people. Don't worry. You're going to heaven per the Mormons. But wait a minute. I think there's a contradiction. Because in the Mormons' own book, the Mormons have here... In Doctrine and Covenants, uh, chapter 42, verse 18. This is this big bad mamma jamma. It has all three of their books. Got it at a thrift store. Um, it states, And now, behold, I speak unto the church, Thou shalt not kill, and he that kills shall not have forgiveness in this world nor in the world to come. Okay, but wait a minute. Your book, your book just said those who continue in their sins and do not repent will receive a place in the telestial kingdom. Well, that's the third part of heaven. But here you're telling me that if you kill somebody, you're not forgiven and you're not even forgiven in the next world. So, which is it? Am I, can I murder somebody and still go to heaven? Because, you know, murder is a sin and it says continue in their sins but yet you're telling me I can't go so finding a little contradiction there mm, not exactly sure what to think alright last one here goes back to the little card there you go there you go it states number 11 this is the articles of faith Joseph Smith, his name is at the very bottom of it, very bottom. Thirteen articles. Number 11 states, We claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the, according to the dictates of our own conscience and allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, let them worship where, 
and let them worship what they may. Okay, let them worship what they may. Okay, well then, then they don't have to worship God. They could worship a tree. They could worship a stick. They could be, you know, like Israel, go back to the Old Testament, make a calf out of gold, you know, and worship it. So you're basically saying, I mean, you're, you're, they're, they're contradicting themselves. And they, they it, it has nothing to do with the Bible. Everything that they have in their book contradicts the Bible. Every single thing contradicts the Bible. And they tell you, with their sweetest can be, they're smiling, they're willing to help you with anything. You want us to get on your roof for you? No, that's okay, baby, that's okay. They're the sweetest people you want to meet. But they have been really deceived. They truly believe that the Book of Mormon is an addition to the Bible. And everything in it contradicts the Bible. And so, basically... I'm just I, I'm I'm just kind of baffled because some of these things, you know, how can how can they have Jesus' name on their building and they claim to believe in Jesus when they don't? And and I'm I'm just I'm baffled because they honestly believe that they're that they're doing God's work. And I, you know, I just wanted to, first I wanted to be mad at them, but I can't be mad at them. You know, I, I feel really, really sorry for them. I feel really sorry for them. Um, because, you know, I, I, I really, I can't, I'm not judging them. I'm just saying that they're going around saying that they, they believe in Jesus when they don't. They've been deceived, and I, I really just don't, I don't know, I'm speechless. I'm sorry, but I am, and tell me again, Titus? 310. 310. It says, you wanted to know why I was saying the things I can say. What gives me the authority, and who gives me the authority? God's Word says it right here. It is God that has the authority to correct them and show them that they're 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 misled. They're and they're and they're leading people astray. And it states in Titus 3:10 it says a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject him. These these guys came by six times. Six times these guys came by and we kept trying to show them that the Book of Mormon was not correct and you know all you can do is pray for them you can us all you can do is pray for them and hope that you plant a seed and that they see the truth that God will you know open their eyes and they will realize they've been reading the wrong book they've been you know they've been following the wrong the wrong doctrine and they came by six times and they still would not sway from what they believe and so God's Word says a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject them and so you know all I can do is pray for them I, don't be ugly to them if they do knock on your door. That's all I gotta say. Just be nice to them. And in fact, you know, um, just ask them if you can pray for them. Pray that God will open their eyes and that they will see that they are in the wrong. They, I'm speechless. I mean, everything I've read to you has been just off the wall crazy. And this is part of someone that's running for president. I may not be fond of Obama's, you know, policy, but I don't want Mitt Romney either. Because after knowing all of this, I can't vote for somebody that purposely goes against God's word. 
and is trying to lead people astray. And in fact, I think the Mormons, all they are is just a club to get money. I think they really, they prey on people and they, they're just a club to get money. Look at, look at their, their big honking huge church. I mean, there's big churches. Every denomination, there's these big honking huge churches. And, you know, they, they make these big huge buildings and everything. But if they won't even let you in their church, and you can't even get past the foyer, which the one in San Diego, we went just to look because we were driving down the road and I'm thinking, is that Lord of the Rings? That's two honking big towers. They're beautiful outside, beautiful, big, huge buildings. We thought we would love to see what the inside looked like. We couldn't get past the foyer because we're not members. But then the lady told us not all members get to go all through the building. That's pretty sad. You know, the Bible says on the outside, they're white sepulchers. They're beautiful. But on the inside, they're dead men's bones. So just pray for them. Everything that I have shown you is out of their own books. Out of their own books. Nothing I've made up. I've given you everything. If you want a copy of it, email us. Send us a note. We'll scan that booger, send it over to you. But, you know, I'm just, I just have to voice my opinion. I'm just like everybody else. I'm struggling, you know, but I, I can't stand to see somebody use Jesus' name. And that, that's just me. I'll stand up for him. I may get shot down 50 times. I may be called all kinds of names, and you'll probably send me a note saying that I'm intolerant. But you know what? I'm standing for Jesus. And I'm standing on his word. And when I see somebody who is misrepresenting, which God's word gives me the authority to correct anybody. And that's this is what this is. It's correction. I've got to do it. I've got to speak up. So I just wanted everybody to know that. They come knocking on your door because they're out in full force. Because Mitt Romney's running for president. So don't be ugly to them. Don't scream at them. Just pray for them because they are brought up in it. It's not like somebody that was Baptist and decided to go Mormon or a Lutheran decided to go Mormon. They're brought up in it. And I do mean they are brought up in it. And it is hard to get through to them to let them see that God's word, that that's, it's not an addition. And so... Um, Pray for them, and um, hope this has been beneficial, and um, let us know. Let us know what you think.